Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is the week in charts. Had a lot of technical issues today, a little housekeeping first, a, little, a lot of technical things happen. So we're gonna keep it kind of short and sweet. And guess what? We're gonna talk about charts and maybe that's what I should be doing in a chart show. Anyway, lately we've been talking a lot about these shit coins and it's S-H-Y-T. And as I've said, I nausea them. I continue to call them that, even though it can be seen as somewhat vulgar, just because it reminds me that this isn't something you invest in, you get in, you get out, you trail a stop in some cases, and you're willing to catch another bus because plenty of buses are coming along. And sometimes in a market like this, you can just buy things that are going up. Now, looking at my cover scheme here, blue means I'm free rolling on the position. That means that I've got in, I've taken partial profits, and I have trailed a stop higher. I'm sorry, cyan means that I'm free rolling on these, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just one second. In fact, let me get something booted in background so it'll be ready to go when the time comes. Now, free rolling to cyan. Purple means I have a position, but it hasn't quite hit the initial profit target just yet. And I do have a stop in place. So I have stop on half, profit target on half. This one may have hit the IPT. Let me check. Um, no, not yet. So, and lately, just because I've been so busy, I've just been putting an IPT at 1.2, which is 20% higher to take off half of the position. So the two purple in here, these are I'm long and they haven't hit the initial profit target. These ones in red means I have a stop and I may be doing something else with those. Uh, by the way, you can see nice little thrust higher. This one has pulled back to the 30 EMA. This is Sheep Enu, which is the big, all the talk lately. You've probably seen it on Yahoo. By the way, all these things are, are probably made up. They're probably bogus, but I think that kind of dovetails into what a bubble is. And if you go back, I was thinking earlier today, if you go back and look at the NASDAQ bubble, some of those dot-com stocks were bogus too. And I know that everybody's all excited about that squid coin that was a scam, and a squid scam, whatever you want to call it. And as I said in my stock chart show, I did not have access to that coin. and Maybe I would have played it, maybe I didn't, but I showed one in the Trading Simplified show that did 100% retrace, and I was able to get a little bit of money out of it, and I think a scratch on the second position there. But overall, little money or scratch, nothing to brag about, but it made 100% retrace. So with money management, and that's the point I'm trying to get to, you should be okay, even if it's a, a scam coin or something, if it's going straight up and you're able to get in and get out, and I know Squid Coin had some scam to it where you couldn't get out or whatever, but luckily, knock on wood, come in. Oh, uh, luckily, knock on wood, I haven't had any issues just yet. And uh, hopefully, yet's not the key word in that sentence. Now, all I've been doing lately because they've been really on fire is just buying the ones that go up. Now, one thing I do want to show you, one of, the guys, one of you guys were talking about uh, staking. And what I've done is based on that or, or motivated by that or encouraged by that or whatever, you gave me the idea because I'm in and out of these things so quickly. Let's, uh, oh, I got to fix this. Let's see. Exit. Let's see. Okay. And we'll pop right to the charts in a second. But because I've been in and out of these things so quickly and they've been hitting the initial profit target like crazy. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm getting stopped out a lot. It's like chip away, chip away, chip away, chip, chip away, bam. And you get into something like Elon or Doge Elon or whatever they call that stupid thing. And I had like some money left over my account, like 400 bucks. And I put that one on because it was taken off and then went to the, the gym, like I've talked about recently, came back and was worth like $2,000. Just absolutely crazy. Now, that doesn't happen that often. But anyway, the reason I want to show you this list is one of you guys were talking about staking in the Facebook group. And that motivated me to peel off just a tiny amount in each one of these. And you know what? It's starting to add up. And I kind of consider this my mining, so to speak. I'm making little air quotes. You don't want to see me there. I'm looking pretty rough. But I'm making little air quotes. And that's kind of my own version of mining. Last week, I talked about mining. And what I had in mind there was instead of running a miner and trying to compete against all these big boys with that limited capital, 
I could be really nimble as a small private trader and go in and out of these things and hopefully generate some cash. Now, it's not about the shit coins. It's about finding a market inefficiency and capitalizing on that. The other thing I was thinking about, guys in this trading group, and I know you guys uh, personally, quite a few of you, and that's a great thing about the Facebook group is I'm getting to know you better and better and better. And some of you guys are such great traders. I, I'm a little humbled. You know, at first I was a little nervous about that. But now it's like, hey, bring it on. We can learn from each other. That's fantastic. And you guys are, are, are just really taking the ball and running with this thing. And I've been really, really impressed with what you've been doing. And I think that us old guys, so to speak, have an advantage. You've got a lot of young players coming into these little shit coins. And I think us old guys with the money management, not getting too greedy, not controlling our emotions, but embracing our emotions, I think we could do really, really well. And I think we almost have an unfair advantage. Now, that's not saying that young people can't be successful at this because a lot of people have been. I think in some cases, it's been a little bit of luck because I know I know personally a few people that just rush out and buy as much as they can of the cheapest coin that they can. So they could say they have 5 million or 10 million or, or, or you know, maybe they can even afford a billion of Elon coin or whatever that is, dodgy loin coin. And they hit it big every now and then. That's a bad strategy. But a good strategy would be to apply some sort of system, apply some sort of Mike, uh, some sort of almost said micromanagement, money management. Make sure you're taking those partial profits and then trailing that stop higher. And I think in that we have an unfair advantage because it's such an inefficient market. And another thing I've been talking about a lot, and people are like, Dave, why do you beat the dead horse so much? Why do you say the same thing over and over? Well, I've been receiving a ton of emails asking me about this 230 EMA system that I've been talking about. So I'm going to walk you through it one more time and then maybe we'll find a couple of live examples or at least recent examples so you can see where it played out. Now, I just randomly grabbed this one, but I knew it was a good chart because I'm long and I already have profits. But you're just looking for two bars of Landry Light, okay? That's one bar there. And Landry Light is just the low is greater than the EMA. In this case, I'm using the 30 EMA, okay? So that's one. That's two. You would enter above the two bar high, oops which would be somewhere here, plus a little wiggle room, maybe about right there would be an entry. And, you know, I'm just looking at this on the fly, and then maybe a stop at the 30 EMA or maybe a little bit below it. So you may have scratched out on that trade, okay? If you do, so what? Like a bus, another one will come along again. Bar one, low greater than the EMA. Bar two, low greater than the EMA, enter above this high, maybe a little wiggle room. So you may have gotten in here or here. And then again, if you give it a little room, maybe below that 30 EMA when it's fairly close like that, you might just catch one taken off. Now, say you got stopped out twice in a row. It happens, spelled a silent SH. Then bar one right here, bar two right here, lows above the moving average, Landry light as we now call it. Enter somewhere above this high with a little wiggle room, you would have got in way up here. Now, I know it's kind of hard to take that leap of faith and buy these things when they're going up. But here's what I'm looking for. And I probably bought it somewhere in there. Here's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for a 20% run higher and then I'm out. I've got a limit order, okay? But I'm also gonna take my stop and move it to, let's say my stop's down here. I'll move it to break even. So the worst I could do, provided it's not a complete scam coin, right? Is break even on the remainder. And also, as I said earlier, once I'm up 20%, I'll take a little piece of this coin, whatever whatever it is, not much, okay, you know, 50 bucks or whatever, and just stick it off into that little account. And to my surprise, that's growing pretty quick. Now, these things are open 365 days a year. So let's say you hit two a day at 50 bucks each, well, you're peeling off $36,000 a year. And, and, you know, I would like to do four a day, which would be $200 at 50 bucks each. And what's that? That's $70,000. Now, it doesn't always happen, but that would be pretty nice. $400 a day is what a, my goal would be. So that'd be a thousand a day. Now, again, I, I can't emphasize this enough. Buyer beware. I, I talk with a trader that I respect a lot and he's got a little crypto here and there, but he hasn't been trading the ship coins. And he told me that he was part of the Mount Gox scare, and I don't know if I'm a scare or a scam, and I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but MTGOX, and 
he lost money on that deal. So he might be a little gun shy on these shit coins. And, you know, like we were talking privately, he was helping out with some website issues earlier. It's like, get in, get your piece, try your stop higher. And then, you know, maybe it is pretty scary to put too much money in, in these little accounts. So I've got three or four of these accounts and I keep it fairly small. Now, the one account that I like the most that has the most coins is not US space, which can be a little scary. I was thinking as we went live tonight, I just did a trade in OMG, FYI, for those keeping score. Uh, this one right here, OMG. And I was thinking that I would be willing to bet, and and you know, don't don't hold my don't hold my feet to the fire on this because I have no control of what happens over there. But I'd be willing to bet an exchange like Coinbase being publicly traded and publicly scrutinized would probably be a safer place. The only problem with Coinbase is you don't have all of these shit coins over there. You only have so many, but it seems to be growing day by day. So as you ease into this, maybe start off with Coinbase and then work into some of these exchanges on the friends. Okay, Craig says, I have a theory, Big Dave, uh, shit coins are not subject to Fed interference as compared to the traditional flights from inflation precious metals. Yeah, you know, and that's that, and I don't want to confuse the issue with facts, but you, you, I'm glad you brought that up, Craig. There are some that are saying the reason all these things are going crazy is there's this big fear of inflation. Now, believe me, inflation is real. <laughs> you know, I never look at prices. My wife normally sends me to the store to buy meat because I just don't look at prices, and she can never buy. This is this has been going on since I've known her, you know, 30 years ago, however long it's been. <laughs> I just thought of a joke, but I better not. Uh, anyway, uh, the other night I went to, she she was going out with some friends or whatever. And it's like, well, you know, I'm just going to grab a pack of ground meat and uh, I'll fry up some burgers for me because I'm by myself, you know, something kind of simple. And uh, I had a hard time pulling the trigger. It was $15 for, for a pack of ground meat. So inflation is there. My, my favorite... My favorite whipping cream that I use in my coffee is $7.50 for a pint, I guess. So it's a little cray cray out there. So yeah, I think that's that's at least one of the arguments that some people are using with these these shit coins. But now you mentioned the Fed. That's gonna be a problem. I think there that that's the government doesn't like people doing things that they don't have control over. And do pay your taxes and believe me i worked for days last year to try to figure out what i made and i even hired a, a a tracking service to try to figure it out and it was complicated but do pay your taxes okay and 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 i i think it's important for you to pay your taxes don't try to do this and and you know sooner or later it'll catch up with you believe me uh but i think that there is some People might be drawn to some of these things because of that. Now, just real back, real quick, we'll get back to the the two the two twenty or two thirty EMA system. One reason I took this trade, other than it was going up, was I figured it'd be a good time to show you in a near live situation. Okay, and it's actually I'm actually losing money so far in the trade, so let's not get too excited. But right here you have bar one. Right here you have bar two. Okay, so the entry would have been right there, and actually because of everything going on today. I just noticed this a little while ago. And sometimes it's a little hard to buy a way up here because you might be buying that exact tick. And looks like so far I might have gotten the exact tick, but so what, we'll see what happens. Now, so as far as systems, right now I am doing pullbacks to the 30 EMA. I'm also just a lot of times, again, as I've been preaching for the last several weeks, buying the ones that are going up. So like right now, if I hit percentage change here, these are all the negative ones, obviously you hit percent again. Now when my list was much smaller with the other exchanges that I've been using, if I saw a bunch of red in that, let's say the red started about right here, went all the way down, I wouldn't even bother going after them. But now there's so many coins in this particular exchange, then usually you can almost always find something. So here's one which straight up, I don't know if I played this one. And when you see these long tails like this, it, they're usually pretty thin. So you need to be careful. And this is a wild, wild west. I'm still learning. The great thing is everything I teach and preach about trading works in these things. And it's a very, very efficient market. 
And I really have nothing to gain by by teaching you how to train these, trade these shit coins. I don't have a service or anything else, but what I hope is that you might, not you guys, because I know you guys are already uh, all in on on the trend following and everything else, but maybe I, my hope is to show you that the trend following can work regardless of the market. And right now, IPOs have been hot. We've caught some great winners. Oh, by the way, CFLT up about, let me check. Up about 11, I'm showing 9.46, and that's about, uh, it's about 13 from the close on that on earnings. And, and I thought I was pretty smart getting out of a little bit in after hours, but it looks like it's it's still gone. So anyway, you look at the strongest ones in here and see this one's tailed off. It's got a lot of tails in it. So this one might be a little thin to trade. Tara, I think I've taken some trades in before. It could be a little squirrely. Hey, Mark, good to see you. Niffy, okay, this is one, this is one I'm long. Why am I long? Because it's going up now. There's a lot of tails back here. Yeah, it looked like the volume kind of picked up in this thing. And that's another thing I hadn't fully wrapped my head around. But here's the deal. As long as you're making, I hate to use the word bet, but as long as you're making fairly small bets, you can pretty much get in and out of these things fairly easily. And this is one, again, I'm pre-rolling on this one. Let's see what else we have. This one looks okay. It's got some long tails on it, so I would be a little leery in that particular case. Let's see what else. I'm long this one here, and you can see it's purple, so that means I have a stop in place and also have initial profit target. This one's a little unorthodox. I know one of you guys out there, you like them coming off of lows and busting up above that 30 EMA, so I'm kind of getting sucked into that pattern a little bit, and hopefully that'll be a good thing. So let's just see what we got going on. Okay, I'm getting ready to say I would buy this one. Well, I already bought that one. I just bought that one. Five minutes before I went live, a lot of tails on that one, a lot of long tails on that one. So I'd be really, really careful. KDA, I'm long, and and it keeps going up. Will it go up forever? I don't know. I hope it does. I really do. But on all of these, like I said, that I've hit the IPT, and you can see my stop needs to come way up, and I'm going to ride it all the way back down to five. But on something like this, I'm peeled off just a tiny amount, and it's stuck it aside. So every every time one hits peel off a little bit, stick it aside, and we'll see what happens. And if all that blow, if well, I don't think they'll all blow up. I hope they don't all blow up. But what I'm hoping is a few of them hit. And I noticed that a couple that I've staked or put into the other account, whatever the case may be, if you can't stake them, then they've they've actually, some of them have really taken off and some of them, some of them have not done so well. Once again, let me just show you one more time because somebody's going to ask, and I've got to remember this video's out there and shoot them this video okay i don't know if this is lander like there but let's just assume this bar is for sure this bar here for sure bar one bar two where do we enter above the two bar high so your entry would have been right there okay right on this bar here and initially you're probably saying boy this sucks right and then luckily it took off pretty nicely uh, from a buck and a half to nine dollars a share if that doesn't get you excited i don't know what will and i know i'm a nerd with all this and believe me, I don't have a, a ton of money in here. And I, I like the, the gentleman I was talking about earlier who um, who lost money in Mount Gox. I said, you know, I'm torn between parlaying a small account and throwing a lot more money at this stuff. And I think I'm just going to keep parlaying that small account and maybe maybe peel off a little bit every now and then and put it into a Coinbase account or someplace where I think it might be a little bit safer. And I make a little air quotes on that, too. So buy and beware on all this stuff. Don't. Don't come crying to me, but right now, the reason I've shown you this, and again, I have nothing to gain, right? Probably everything to lose if if a lot of this stuff goes to zero and all of a sudden you're mad at me. But the reason I'm excited, the reason I'm showing it to you is because technical analysis works here. Technical analysis works incredibly well in an inefficient market and technical analysis works incredibly well. And I'm just talking about buying stuff that goes up pretty much when I say technical analysis. But the 230 EMA and stuff like that works too, pullbacks, et cetera. But everything works better with trim. Now, the other thing I want to show you real quick too that I've been noticing is if you didn't know anything about trading and you said, okay, well, I'm not going to buy any of these shit coins as long as they're below the 30 EMA. And you're going to be shocked at how many of them just go below the 30 EMA and never rise up. 
Let's see if we could find something interesting. So this is one I'm still long, okay? Got in here, oh, actually got in here, sold half here, stop is right here. Magically, it didn't hit it, so far so good. Knock on wood. Let's just see if we can find something real quick. And then on the downside, I'll show you what how ugly it looks just by following that 30 EMA. And again, here's a testament for money management, right? I got in here, got out here, that's 20%, rolled it up, trailed the stop, don't know where I stopped out, but I got a little bit out of it and then it came right back in. Get on, get a ride, and GTFO. Let's see if we can find something here. But you kind of get the idea. And, and basically, you just want to get on the ones that are hot. I mean, the only thing that's killing me lately and, and why I want to throw more money at it is a lot of times I'll run out of slots, so to speak. So if you take a look at, again, all the ones that I'm free rolling on, I'm pretty much, as the, uh, remember that YouTube drive, it was all filled up. So I'm pretty much filled up as far as positions. <laughs> You didn't give me my extra McRib. She said, you don't look like you need an extra McRib. <laughs> and I said, excuse me, bitch. <laughs> anyway, so I think I'm all filled up for the most part. Uh, I do have some cash, I think, in uh, Coinbase and a tiny bit about in Kraken. By the way, I've been having issues with Kraken lately. Every time I go to buy something, that's never available. So y'all let me know if y'all experience the same thing. Let me know in the comments below. Now, let me just show you one more thing real quick. Like I said earlier, you know, secret to trading is staying out of crappy markets, okay? So let's just see. Notice as we go through a lot of these ones that are that are kind of imploding, maybe I'm not going to be vindicated on this because some of them look good. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is if you pay attention to that 30 EMA, there we go, there's one. Notice that this thing never really rallied, but it also never really went above its 30 EMA. So I think that is something that could help keep you out of trouble. That's a sheep thing everybody's getting excited about. I bought this thing way back here, parlayed it into actual money, <laughs> and then stopped out recently and bought a HODL shirt to um, kind of a joke, but looks like I had to bail out on it anyway again 30 ema something good to look at might keep you out of trouble this is one i was in got stopped out but it's a really deep retrace but this thing might take off again and as i said earlier you might look to play some more traditional things such as pullbacks to the 30 ema if it, if, if they pull back that far in some cases they won't maybe the 20 ema so she by the way is she again you can see it's pulled back to the 30 ema you know, maybe enter somewhere around here where I have this alert might be a good place to enter. I did have a, a, a stop entry order there in place. I had to take it off to place some other order, so I need to put it back on after the show. Anyway, so that's pretty much all I've been doing, just to, just to trend following more on stuff, playing some pullbacks here and there. One thing I really like is, let's say this thing pulls back a little further and then begins to rally, has a sharp rally, so it comes up high in the list. So I'm playing the reversion to the mean move, plus I'm playing the strongest one on a relative strength basis. And again, all the technical analysis works really, really well because it's a very emotional market. And, and in fact, technical analysis really works its best or pretty much only works in, in a very emotional market. And these things trade purely on emotions another thing i was thinking about if i had had time to put together slides tonight is what tom mcclellan once said and he talked about how you buy a stock you're forming a relationship between you and the company and you hope the company does good things and the company normally does good things a couple of scam companies out there i can think of a few from the dot-com era and then obviously squid coin squid scam was a scam but for the most part, the company, staying on stocks, has your best interest in mind. A bigger concern, as Tom McClellan was explaining to us at an AAPT meeting in New Orleans, American Association of Professional Technical Analysts, he said that your bigger concern is the people who bought the stock prior to you. And he went on to say, and those people will screw you. So we're trading traders, not markets. Again, you know, old guys rule. I really think old guys rule in this particular case. And 
I think we have a chance to make a lot of money while the young guys are going to flounder a little bit because they're trying to buy as these things go down. They're trying to buy as cheap as possible. They're a little afraid to buy things that are going up, and they're certainly not going to spend the time to learn simple technical analysis and follow a system like the 230 or something like that. And they're also not going to use proper money management. Now, if you're a young guy and you want to do all that, that's fantastic. I have all that on the back of the website, soft sell, and then become a gold member, learn about all these things, and then you could trade stocks, and then you could trade crypto, and then down the road, whatever the next big exciting bubble will be, we don't know, you'll be ready for that. So that's the other point I want to bring up with these things is learn to recognize these bubbles. And I talked a little bit, not the last week at Bandcamp, but I talked a little bit about these bubbles in my Trading Simplified show that posted yesterday on YouTube. And if my website ever gets fixed, I'll put it right back up, <laughs> you know? Uh, but anyways, the uh, the thing is, is to recognize inefficiencies, recognize these bubbles. And, and I gave a few little tips and tricks of recognizing bubbles. And one of them is people poo-poo them. And then as soon as something goes wrong, they're all over it, like the squid scam or whatever. So be careful with that. And you know, I was laughing at that Twitter video of that guy, uh, John Z sent me, I actually put it in my stock charts show. And I wasn't laughing because he lost money. I was just laughing as a reaction because that's sometimes how you feel when you're when you're dealing with these things. All right, so that's the, the shit coins for now. <laughs> Craig says, is this the one place on earth where my freaking age is advantage? Well, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, finally, finally, I got an advantage. You know, I went to the doctor. Knee was hurt. I got arthritis in my knee. It's like I, my camera's off, so I got my hand braces on. It's like, boy, I'm a, you know, it's like I got my uh, compression socks on right now. It's like, you know, walk in the house, look at the wife. I'm like, do I make you horny? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, oh, man. Sorry, it's been a long day. I know I'm kind of goofy tonight. A little punch drunk. All right, let's pop it to, let's take a look at stocks. You guys want to ask about individual stocks, feel free to do so now. We'll take a look at your uh, stock, your favorite stock picks. In the meantime, I just want to show you real quick what's what's happening in the markets. And it's pretty much, it's pretty good. And oh, by the way, the, uh, the inefficiency right now in the stock market is the IPOs, okay? PTLO was up almost nine points today. Wow, nine points. <laughs> I kind of saved my butt today. And look at this, real simple stuff, right? Nice rally from lows, little pullback. This was on the Landry list back here. I took the trade right around here. I talked about it in Facebook. So anything that I show you, ideally, I don't want to have, I want to make sure that I showed you ahead of time. Here's CFLT. This one's been a crazy ride. This has been a testament of your four to two, but nice IPO. Didn't do a whole lot when it first came out, but notice one, two, three, four, five and then came right back in. No capital's put in harm's way. We really didn't have a pattern back here. But it made a nice little rally, nice little pullback, and it's been a bumpy ride. And then again, it's up, I think, 13 points in after hours trading. Let me see. Yeah, it's up quite a bit. What else am I in? Uh, I got an AKA yesterday or day before, AKA. I don't know if I mentioned that in the Facebook group. If not, my apologies. The entry would be above this high because day one set the high for the week, okay? And then I bought it either on this closing high or maybe even yesterday on the closing high because this wasn't a definitive. No, nope, I bought it yesterday's closing on the close because this wasn't really a definitive signal here and here. So CFLT blew away the earnings estimate. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the only thing. That's the reason that I did. Now, interesting point. Glad you brought that up. I did lighten up in one of my accounts on that. I'd already taken half as I'm supposed to based on the trading service in one of my accounts. I'd attract the trading service a little bit more closely. But in another one of my accounts where I had a bigger position, I still took half, but I ended up taking like half of the half just in case it's not a sustainable move. Sometimes you get these huge moves on earnings and it's a little hard to hang on to. Oh, so AKA beat earnings too? Wow. What's it doing? Not much, huh? Not much yet. Oh, OLPX, that's another one. Not to confuse the issue with facts, but you guys have been sending me pictures of the o OLPX stuff, whatever you call it stuff, Olaplex on your bathroom counters. 
the stuff ain't cheap and the women like it. Not to confuse the issue with facts. And my wife's hair has never looked better. So again, let's not confuse the issue with facts, but so far so good on that one. Been a little bit of a bumpy ride though. What else am I in? INFA, I think. INFA. It's kind of fun having all my screens up. Normally have a curtain behind me. I got it this one. Let's see, bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four, bar five. That's a buy at B and a little bit high price, but lately I've been a little lenient, buying up to 30 or so on that. And so I got in a few days ago. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Got it on this day here. And I'm just up a tiny bit. So we'll just have to see, wait and see what happens on that one. And uh, John Ross, I just mentioned AKA tonight. Yeah, John. John's been doing a good job keeping us abreast of the IPO. So hats off to you, John. And I appreciate the work you've been putting in to the Facebook group, keeping us informed on these IPOs. What else am I in? There's got to be something else. IPO. Anybody think of any recently? Toast? Yeah, I didn't do toast. Yeah, toast is, wouldn't I wouldn't have bought this one because it's not a buy at B because of the price. But yeah, if it pulls back a little bit, uh, a little bit more, it might be interesting. John says it is a great group. It is a great group. It is a great group. And and I've been involved in forums on and off for the last 30 years. This is my favorite all-time forum. And this one has lasted the longest. So I'm very excited about that. And I, I you know, I, I always say it keeps the riffraff out. Having to be a member of DaveLander.com, having to be at least a gold member in, in a service member too, a service member, you get it all free. But yeah, it, it's it's really been, you know, I always joke, keeps riff rap out, but you know, we're, we're kind of, we all have different ways of doing things and we don't always agree, but in general, we all wanna make money and we're all trend followers. Let's take a look at the market real quick. And again, if you have any stock picture you wanna talk about, I know the Facebook group kind of eliminates a lot of that, but feel free to bring them up now. S&P 500, bam, winning all time highs. This is a tiny Elvis market. Look at that trend. It's huge, right? <laughs> tiny Elvis would love this market. All-time highs. Nice breakout. I've been bitching forever. Like, we need to get past this high decisively. Well, we've gotten past this high decisively. Now, eventually, it will pull back a little bit. Don't get too freaked out. Maybe even a TKO type of move, but that's okay, right? Let's take a look at NASDAQ Composite. And, you know, I don't want to confuse the issue with facts again, but somebody brought up inflation a few minutes ago. Um, could these, could the stocks, you know, where else are you going to go to make money when things are being inflated? Maybe these assets will get inflated too. Now, as the composite, look at that. Look at that trend. It's huge. Nice persistent uptrend. You can draw a line through most of the bars in here. In fact, it's actually accelerating a little bit. So that gets me pretty darn excited. Don't worry, though, or be careful. We will have a pretty serious correction at some point. And time, Russell 2000 finally got out of that god awful range. I was going to say something even worse. Today it stalled out a little bit. Not the end of the world though. So far so good. I sure would like to see it clear this decisively. As I often say, bigger the base, bigger the launch into space. And then I found out that Acapora, some guy named Acapora, never heard of him. Ralphie, I think, is his name. Said it before me. So I've got to give him credit every time I say it now. Energy's nice run higher, pulling back a little bit in here, could create an opportunity really, really soon. It's like each day a new area takes off. It was durables a few days ago, then non-durables. And then banks have come back from the dead. Today, they got kind of whacked a little bit. But a lot of areas at or near new highs. Go through all your charts when you get a chance. Retail banging out new highs with vigor. Look at that trend, it's huge, okay? Here's the thing, software new highs, that's a good thing. But here's the thing I'm most excited about. As I say ad nauseum, if I'm looking for a sector to confirm what I'm seeing in the overall markets, I want it to be the semiconductors. And look at the semiconductors, begging out new highs with vigor. You know what, I got shaken out of bros, and I, in hindsight, I think I got shaken out a little early on this one. This one could set up again, it's looking pretty good. So bros, I get, got in on a steep retracement, and I did put out a post in Facebook, and if I didn't, let me know, but I'm pretty sure I did because I made fun of I was saying, hey, or you bros with me on this one, but it looks pretty good. Nice thrust higher, deeper trace, but and this thing has been off to the moon. So yeah, I was going to mention Nvidia. Now Nvidia, Nvidia is going to actually makes the cards where they process the uh, they they mine bitcoins 
with uh, GPUs, and they bought, they mined some other um, coins with GPUs because G GPUs are really good at processing graphics. And I remember years ago, before I even knew what a Bitcoin was, uh, and back when I was using, uh, I, I would kind of build, I wouldn't call it a gaming computer, but I'd build a, a, a computer where I wouldn't build it. I'd buy one that's mostly built, and then I would just get me a really good graphics card. And then all of a sudden, the graphics card prices went through the roof, and I couldn't find them. And there were some people that were ahead of the game, and they were actually mining the Bitcoins with the GPU. So Google GPU mining on YouTube if you get bored. And the video is actually coming out cards that are make it make it harder to mine. And the other thing they're doing, which is kind of fascinating, is they're they're working on cards that make it harder to hack. So what some of these people are doing, these distant these uh, scumbag people, right? They're writing viruses that go in and steal your GPU power and mine Bitcoin for them. So they're not going to get but like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction by breaking into one of my computers. But guess what? You break it to a thousand computers or a million computers. And while you're sleeping at night, they're, they're stealing all your GPU power and all your electricity in their mining Bitcoin. So it's a it's a wild, wild west out there. But yeah, NVIDIA is probably getting pushed higher by the, the GPUs, but it's kind of interesting. They're trying to discourage the mining of Bitcoin on the GPUs, but it's like, you know, why would you bite the hand that's feeding you? And, and I think the problem is a lot of their customers, their longer term customers, especially their business customers, are a little aggravated because they can't get the, the graphics cards they need to use for graphics. Okay. All right. So market looking pretty good. Check back often. Bird. Okay, bird's only two days in, so we need at least five days. But yeah, put bird on your radar. We'll go bird hunting. Ricardo, let's talk about GFS. Yeah, this looks fantastic. Now, this is not a buy at B because the price is too high. Let me put in, I don't know if a five day will work yet. I'm not a huge fan of the buy at B and higher price issues. No, it's we're not enough days for moving average. But you can use Landry Light with a five day SMA to get you in these higher price ones and it's good for them to break away. I would wait for this to pull back, but hey, good eye on that, Ricardo. Thanks for sharing that with us. We'll make sure that's on the radar. It should be on the radar. All right, so Stuart bought T-Y-R-A today. T-Y-R-A, thanks for full disclosure. Most people are like, uh, hey, you like this stock? You know, and I know you're long. Yeah, uh, that's pretty good. Now here, here's what I like about this one, Stuart. Good eye and congratulations. You know, maybe I'm congratulating too early, but that's one of the things about buy it B. Buy it B does not have a time limit, okay? I like them the most when they trigger on day five. That's some of the best setups ever. But sometimes these things can go weeks and even months before triggering, and you get like a little stealthy trigger, and everybody forgets about it, and all of a sudden, people wake up again. So tomorrow what's going to happen is people come in and see this TYRA possibly taken off. The only thing that scares me a little bit is that it is a little bit on the thin side, only 95,000 shares traded today. And that doesn't seem like a lot. It used to be 100,000 shares was enough. Seems like nowadays, I don't know what's changed, but it seems like the spread gets a little crazy. It's a little harder to get out, in and out of these somewhat thinner stocks. And Stuart also bought THRN. Stuart went on a buying spree, THRN. Yeah, look at that. Looks good too. A little on thin side too, but yeah, sweet. Uh, the range was, I was looking at this one, but the range was a little small, but that's the tricky part with today's day with trading that makes your range. Again, this this uh, this volume bothers me a little bit, a little bit on the thin side, but yeah, it took out the day one high, which in this case, the high for the first week of trading was set on day one. But yeah, that's a good looking stock. I think I think you're going to do okay on those. I really do. M R A I in my uh I've been I was so busy today trying to deal with website issues, still dealing with website issues, that I didn't get to check in on Facebook. And then I checked in late tonight and I saw you guys were all over some of these IPOs. M R A I. Yeah, uh this one could work. Uh looks like it's got decent volume so far. Yeah, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Your closing high is here. Any close above 575. Yeah, I'm gonna give you uh I'm gonna give you a almost a high five on that one. We'll we'll know it when we see it, but yeah, I think that might be worthwhile. 
for sure. You bought AVDX? I think I'm long that one. I hope I'm long that one. Maybe not. No, I'm not. You know, that's a good one. Okay. I did I did look at this one. Okay, now I remember why I didn't take it. The range was a little small, but that doesn't seem to have mattered as much lately. But yeah, nice little buy B pattern on there. Day one did not set the high for the week because day four took out that high. So that rule goes out. But day one did set the closing high. So yeah, nice work on that one, Stuart. Stuart's gonna be the new uh <laughs> John Ross. Yeah, you guys are all getting jealous because John Ross is is kicking butt. So Stuart's gonna be the next John Ross. M R A I. We talked about that one. Yeah, HRT. Yeah, this could be another one, and I, I think it needs to be in your watch lists. Uh, again, the range is a little small on that. So if it makes a nice wide range bar, remember in this particular case, day one set the high for the week. It's funny, I'm like, I don't want to do the show tonight. I'm exhausted. It's just so much stress and all these trades today and the market's all over the place and I crank up these charts and I get all excited. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. But yeah, it's going to have to be experienced in the range. Right now, the range is a little bit small on that one. But yeah, keep it on your radar. And that's the thing is some of these things, some of these things can be a little stealthy and, and some of these things you really got to be on your game to pick up on them. And remember I said earlier, I'm impressed with everyone like those two, I think Stu had brought up what kind of stealthy setups and, and I missed them just because I'm watching all this other stuff, uh, the shit coins, the market, I got some e-minis on. I've been backing off on my ETF trading, but sometimes I just can't resist myself like biotech. I think yesterday I had to buy the lab. You, I bought something today. Let's see. Uh, did I buy semis? No, uh, I should have bought semis. Lab D. I actually played lab D a little bit today. Oh, I lost money on that. That was stupid fighting a trend. What was I thinking? Um, there was a ogre that worked out. Oh, SPWR. Now I didn't print money in ogres today. I did make enough money because I took it. I took the I took the best one in more than one account. Thank God, SPWR. So what I liked about this one, okay, it's a semiconductor. Semiconductors are hot. Nice run higher, as you can see. And then we had the gap down. I put an entry at 31 and I rode it all the way to the close. I didn't take profits because I never did hit my profit target. So I, I rode the full position into the close. And you know, actually uh, in one account in my IRA, I actually kept these shares overnight just because I like the way it looks. I know that's dangerous behavior if you're day trading, but I'm not pure day trading. I am sometimes using these opening gap reversals to establish a longer term trend and maybe flip out a little bit by the end of the day. If you wanna learn more about ogre trading, I talk a lot about it. We did a lot of Q and A's early on before the Facebook group, we did a lot of Q and A's. Now we're talking about these things in Facebook enough to where I feel like we don't need any Q and A's. But if you wanna get up to speed, I did a lot of opening gap reversal presentations as part of the Q and A. BFRI, we talked about that one, BFRI. Yeah, we'll have to wait. Well, this one's kind of cheap. And lately, I've, I haven't, I say lately, in general, I don't like buying IPOs less than $5 a share. But if it makes a big rally, it'll end up being over $5 a share. So it might be worth a shot. Or did I take that one? I did not. But that one could work. You've got OK range. Range could be a little bit better. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Would have triggered today. Did you take it, Jeff? That looks pretty good. That's kind of one of those stealthy setups. I, I prefer a little bit more range, especially for biotech. A little on the thin side, 200,000 shares, but that's that's pretty good looking stock. Yeah, low on cash. No, that's the thing too. And that's why, of course, I regret it doing it, peeling off some of those brother shares. But I also feel like, I need to raise some capital because there are some other things out there like these IPOs. I need to open up some slots. And that's that's what I've been doing those cryptos is keeping a fairly tight stop on these breakouts just in case they don't work out. And then once they move in my favor, I'm free rolling, then I open it up a little bit to stop that is. But yeah, I've been, been really playing it close to the vest on a lot of them because another bus is coming along, coming along, coming along every day. Rose, yep. CFLT, yep. I'm in that one. PTLO, yep. Also expensive. Yeah, that's a thing too. You're right. You're right. And, and they are expensive. 
But, you know, as long as they move, you know, bros wasn't that expensive. It was expensive. It was in the 40s, right? You could, uh, 100 chairs, $4,000. It's not too ridiculous. But, yeah, up in the 70s, it, it gets a little bit harder harder to stomach, you know. And then the, the equity swings, even on 100 chairs, could be could be quite uh, impressive. I think I had over 20-something points, and I only had, like, 100 shares of one account on bros. And it was like two thousand dollars. I mean, I know, do the math. They, you know, rocket science. You know, be a rocket scientist to do that. But it's as long as they're moving twenty points, then then you don't worry so much about the um, about the higher price ones. The Landry the Silver Mice, the shorting MRNA today. Yeah, uh, we, we've had that one on the sh on the short list here and there. Always a little scary to short a biotech. It wasn't really set up, but I hear you uh, on an intraday basis to say he's breaking down and not coming back. So nice work on that. John Z has left, so we could talk about him. MNDY, that's Monday, right? MNDY, MNDY. Yeah, there's nothing really here for me because it's sort of sideways at best. But maybe if it breaks out, then first of the pullback might be worthwhile. Still in and think about adding on the bros. Yeah, I need to see about getting back into bros. Been shaking on that one. M R A I. And again, that was that like uh, somebody just brought up. They're expensive. It's kind of like, oh man, you know, if I sell a hundred shares of bros at eighty dollars or seventy five dollars a share or whatever, that's seven eight thousand dollars, and that's going to go a long ways. And you, you know, you got eight thousand dollars. You come in here and something like this thing, you could buy twelve hundred, fifteen hundred shares. You know, that's what you want to chase low price issues but yeah it, it does tie up a lot of capital um i think the options are probably too expensive but sometimes you get those real expensive stocks options might be worthwhile ong is pushing toward my ipt let's hopefully that happens during this show uh if you guys want to rush out and put some of your kids college fund in it it's omg usd <laughs> we'll see how that works we just need 20 percent, right and we're, we're looking for those greater fools. And believe me, a lot of times I am the greater fools. Stuart, I don't know if I read this or not. Stuart said, thank John Ross for the IPOs. And we do thank John Ross very much. We appreciate that. We're going to buy John the beer or the coffee, whatever he chooses when we ever get together. I do have a client that he said it twice, so I might have to take him serious on it. He, he told a third party that he would be willing to offer up his place in Hilton Head if we wanted to do like a little mini retreat one weekend. And we might have to take him up on that. We'd have to find our own places to stay, but he would open up his house over there as a venue. And I think we can get together and maybe John will talk about IPOs. I'll talk about shit coins. We talk about money management. Okay, John says beer, left alone. All right, you got it, buddy. <laughs> Craig says he thinks everybody in the Facebook group. I, I do too. I do too. George says, showed up your voice on the side. Ah, oh, I just was so pissed off all day long. And now I'm like, I'm kind of getting jazzed with everything. Yeah. I am pretty excited tonight. It was a rough day and my website's still in the shitter, you know, so we got to figure that out tomorrow, but tomorrow's another day. I might have to break down and have a beer during the week tonight. <laughs> But yeah, you know, we just talked about uh, we're all having a love fest or Facebook group. And, you know, George, I know you're a little newer to trading. That's one thing I've been really enjoying is seeing somebody new come in and, and go through the ups and downs that we all go through. And and I'm, I'm thinking that you're kind of saying, you know what, I am beginning to get this. I see that you guys are going through ups and downs, too. It's all starting to make sense. And it used to be kind of a revolving door. People come in, they try some things out for like a week or two. They, they look at my stuff and then they're off to chase rainbows again. I think with the Facebook group, from a selfish standpoint and from a a good standpoint, it's like there's a little bit of retention that's happening there, and and we just kind of tough it out until we get to the good times. And you know, how long do we wait? How long do we wait to get to where we are now to make some money? In the service, at least, it was 49 days trigger to trigger on setup. So that's a long time to wait. 49 trading days, right? Is that right? No, 49 calendar days. Still, it's a lot. George says, yes, you and, you and all members rock. Yeah, we're having a little love fest here tonight. 
It's like 49 minutes now. Yeah, I said I would only talk a few minutes. Thoughts on Boots? Been watching and watching. Did we talk about that one? Yeah, Boot looks good. It's got to pull back, though, okay? Um, decent volume. It trends fairly cleanly, and it's been trending cleanly. No, this is accelerating higher. Uh, yeah, that's a good-looking stock. Not that I play can't clean. Uh, not that I play can slim or anything, but this kind of reminds me of some can slimmy type of stock. I want to start with one of you guys. And uh, one of your money managers doesn't trade uh, can slim, but he's kind of all over these can slim type stocks. And that kind of reminds me of, of one of those. It's kind of a it's kind of a boring company, right? They sell boots, but it's going up. So yeah, uh, Ricardo, yeah, on a pullback, like TKO would be beautiful. And the other thing you might want to watch for, the only problem is you might be watching a long time. Let's say we have a big opening gap reversal. Let's say it opens down around 105, okay? Well, what could happen is it could turn around and go straight back up. And that's because probably a lot of institutions are excited about owning this. Of course, the volume's a little thin, so that, that argument might not hold water. But sometimes a well-known company, when they have the opening gap reversals, like today, there were three opening gap reversals. And the only one I was really excited about was SPWR. I took the other two anyway, and I broke even on one, and I lost on one, but SPWR was the one that, that actually worked out nicely for me, as opposed to 49 days. Yeah, a lot going on now. I told everybody when, when during those 49 days, every day I'd say, you know, at one point in time, you're going to complain because there's too much going on. I think we might be in one of those times now, but the, the thing is you have to make hay while the sun shines. And that's why I'm so excited about some of the stuff right now, you know, check back often and we'll see. All right, any more stock picks? I said I would keep it quick and then I almost went a whole hour. I got so excited. All right, I wanna thank all you guys and girls for being in tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Thanks for finding the show without any promotions whatsoever. When the website comes back up and is working again, it's only been down, I guess, a half a day now, but when it comes back up, DaveLearner.com slash webinar to register. Once you're registered, you should be registered for as long as I remember to keep adding shows. For everybody here who's not in Facebook, have a fantastic weekend. If we don't talk again and everyone else, I'll see you tomorrow or maybe late tonight in Facebook. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome, Mark. You're welcome, Carter.